She hates when I do this. Can, any, can anybody name this song? We gotta have some fun. Name that tune. Name that tune. Michelle doesn't even know who this is. Yes, I do. You do? So welcome to Adam and Michelle Carey.com. Well, this is not our website, but we are uh, excited you're here. We love to come alongside entrepreneurs, especially in the network marketing space. And we do a four at four, four days a week, four o'clock Pacific. We don't always have music, but today we do. Because it's hump day? Because it's hump day. As in Wednesday. As in Wednesday. <laughs> so uh, if you would, please type in where you're call or where you're tuning in from. And if you know the name of this tune, you will win a bonus prize. Did we discuss this prize? No, we didn't. Oh, dear. You will win a uh, congratulations. Okay, so anyway, on to what we're doing today. Okay. We kind of had Down a to gap business. between... Um, hey, Michael. Awesome. Oh yeah, you won uh, You won a book from the giveaway we did with uh, yeah. Simon Chan. So welcome Michael, welcome Thunderstruck. Carlotta, Thunderstruck. He won the book and he won whatever you, prize you had. You won a shout him. out. Congratulations <laughs> on naming that tune. Okay, as you were saying. As I was saying, so we're in the in between our two book studies. So we just finished up the 15 Laws of Invaluable Laws of Growth by John C. Maxwell and we are starting tomorrow to kick off our Don't Be That Guy in Network Marketing series where we dive into network marketing etiquette. We have one to show them. And we are, yeah, it's probably, there's probably one there. We are kicking it off with our special interview with Rob Sperry, network marketing rock star. So he has um, some times where he was that guy that he wants to share with the world, which is amazing. Thank you so much, Rob, for being so transparent and open to sharing your failures. You know, I think as um, leaders, I think followers or people in general, I should say, love when leaders can be real and they're actually, they can actually stand up and say, I've made X, Y, Z mistakes and I still made it. Well, if you, as John Maxwell said when we were in Atlanta, if you want to impact people, you share your success stories. I'm sorry. If you want to impress people. <laughs> I got it wrong. Dang it. <laughs> That's why you have to Scratch review that. your notes. Start it if over. you want to impress people, you share your success stories. But if you want to impact people, you share your failures. Yeah. So good. So you can go to robsperry.com, S-P-E-R-R-Y, right? S-P-E-R-R-Y. R -R -Y. Yeah. Uh, to learn about him tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Make sure you jump on because it's going to be a live interview. You're going to see us. You're going to see him. It's going to be on Facebook Live. It's going to be amazing. And it's all going to get us kick-started for our book review, Don't Be That Guy in Network Marketing. You don't want to be that guy. We cover the 21 common mistakes, and you can join our private Facebook group page. We'll include that in the comments if you want to follow along as an interactive study, as well as uh, post testimonies and stories. would love to hear some stories from you guys on when you were that guy. So, our little mini-series that we were doing this week, what did we talk about on Monday? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. Le great leaders do this every day. And it was? Ask questions. Great. And then yesterday was great leaders are decisive. They make decisions. They mm -hmm. do it quickly because they know what they want. Today, it's great leaders blank. They do this and it's probably not what you were expecting to hear. So let's take a poll real quick and then I'll explain a, a free gift that we have for all leaders, people who have a growing team, people who aspire to have a team one day. And so, so what's what do the you poll? think it is? What do you think it is? Great, Great leaders, leaders do, do this. this. So in the meantime, welcome Dubai in the house, Philadelphia, awesome. New York, Houston, Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, please share this with your community. So great leaders do this. Let's see your answers. There's a little bit of a delay. What do you think it is? So anyway, um, about the gift Sleep on, in? on your webs on our website, Maybe. Adam and Michelle .com, You could scroll down to the middle of the homepage and you'll see six free gifts in there. And one in particular I want to talk about is the one for leaders. If you do three way calls for your team, if you aspire to do three way calls, we have how to overcome the number one objection in network marketing and then um, with that package you have the option to get the entire training package how to overcome the top five concerns in network marketing and we actually will explain why we um, 
we, why we want you to look at it is in concern rather than an, an objection. So that's available as well. So if, you know, that's not just for leaders because as you know, in the conversations um, with your network marketing business, people kind of throw out objections from the beginning. A lot of objections don't just come at the end when they're trying to make a decision. A lot of them come from at the beginning. For example, is this a pyramid scheme? And you know, if that is thrown out at you at the beginning of your conversation, it's really important to be able to overcome that concern um, confidently and in the right posture for you to have the conversation continue. So if you can't answer that question or if like you cower or you know they just kind of feel like a weird vibe coming out of that then that conversation will probably end right there so anyway go to adamandmichellecarry.com scroll down you'll see it you could download that first video for free how to overcome the number one objection that you're going to get thank you for posting the link in the comments yep. shannon we appreciate that all right so you're ready to unveil today's... yeah so do we have some guests yeah uh live congruently we had mm. adjust um, yeah, leaders definitely know how to adjust. They definitely know how to celebrate their success. I like that. Everyone. Celebrate like the that success too. with uh, with everybody. That is good. Um, so so today. today, really, what we wanted to talk about is great leaders own up to their mistakes. Meaning, oh. they don't play the blame game and they don't make excuses. And they definitely don't do that. How about we get some um, politicians on this Facebook uh -oh. Live and they Maybe learn how to not. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, everybody, we probably all need a little help in owning up to some mistakes. Yeah. It takes integrity. It takes character. It takes, you know, being, um, just get, you just being real and raw and authentic. Yeah. And so we have Philippines in the house, Mabuhai. We taught our daughters to say my booty my, my, and she says my booty. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so. so look, we got a few different ways we want to start this out. What got me thinking about this topic. So great leaders own up to the mistake. Uh, own up to their mistakes. And um, I love reading out of uh, John Maxwell's Leadership Bible. And I was reading in Psalms the other day. And in Psalms 51, what John does is he takes out different scriptures, different um, throughout throughout the Bible. And he'll, he'll talk about leadership lessons. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to read from this one. So when David wrote uh, Psalms 51, it was shortly after he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Now, when Nathan confronted him about his sin, the king fell to the floor and wept in bitter repentance. Mm -hmm. He publicly sought restoration as a king and as a spiritual man, and as, as this great psalm demonstrates. Because of his repentant heart, God allowed him to remain in office until he died. So here's what I want to talk about. Why is it that some leaders that are removed from office... Um, okay, wait. Some leaders are removed from office when they fail morally. Why could David remain king? And we can learn something from this. The answer may lie in the law of solid ground, which is one of John Maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. David practiced the law and, and maintained his trust in God. Those who do not repent after some failure or who, or who do so only for public show often lose their positions. Some sins no doubt disqualify leaders from continuing in leadership. But here's, here's the best part. More fail in leadership from their deceptions than their mistakes. Mm, that's good. I'm going to say that again. More leaders fail in their deceptions than their mistakes. It's not because you made a mistake. It's because mm -hmm. you didn't own up to it or you start justifying of why you did it and it's not your fault. And like people just appreciate honesty. You know, we just got the ability or opportunity, I should say, uh, and the honor to train on the law of the ladder from the last book we just read, which states your character growth determines the height of your personal growth. It took me like a month to remember that little phrase. But it talked all about character. And you know what the number one uh, admired trait is of a leader? It's honesty. That's the number one yeah. admired trait of any leader is honesty. People want their leaders to be honest. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind? Wow, what comes to mind? I think the first thing that comes to mind um, is, you know, I'm not going to point fingers, but I've just seen this happen in our profession of network marketing when people cross recruit or take someone that was supposed to be on someone else's team. And it's mm -hmm. like when they're doing it, there's justification for it. Well, I'm a better leader. This person is local and they needed my help. So 
I justify that that person should be on my team. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, uh, you could call it karma or whatever you want. I've seen it happen to them. And then it's like, they're all mad about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, don't go do something to someone else if it, you're going to be mad about it when it's done to you. Mm -hmm. And so that's just one of the things, like one of the areas I'd like to see our profession really start to um, stop. I guess is the whole cross recruiting, you know, like going and deliberately taking teams from people when you know that they're active in another company. It's different if they're not active and you just want to touch base and it happens that they're uh, looking for a home, but it, it is another thing when you know that they're active and you go in and you give them like all of these kind of like, I don't know, we'll talk about it more in our network marketing etiquette series, but fishing. Yeah. And so I, I just think the intent matters and there's intent that's different from catching up and then there's an intent that is wrong and that's called fishing. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's very destructive in our profession. And I want you to share the story that uh, Jordan shared at the... Um at the Atlanta event with Maxwell, if you could. Yeah. But I want to I want to read this uh, the last part of this little excerpt, this leadership excerpt. Um, so again, more fail in leadership from the deception than their mistakes. History teaches that the public usually forgives a leader who owns up to their mistakes. That's true, but they refuse to forgive those who remain unrepentant that won't take responsibility. Yeah. And so we were really impacted actually a couple years ago by a leader that many of you might know, Jordan Kemper, who's a, has a top leader in MLM. He's a young guy. I don't even think he's 30 years old yet. But he shared something on the GoPro stage a couple years ago that really impacted us. And we saw him, actually got to chat with him a little bit in Atlanta, and he shared the story again because he also, him and his wife, trained on the law of the ladder, so talked about character. Can you share a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, so anyway, he um, just admittedly on stage, and we mentioned this um, during our book study as well, is uh, he had cross-recruited, and he realized what he did was wrong, and he went to the ownership of the company, he went to the leaders um, that it affected, because it, you know, you take someone from a line, it affects a lot of people. And so anyway, he was repentant to his company leadership, and when he just shared that, it, I think it, that was probably one of the most impactful speeches of the entire day, perhaps mm -hmm. the entire course, mm -hmm. just because you have someone that that um, is perceived like he, he is a big leader, you know, and he, w he was just transparent and open about his failures. And what was more impactful is he shared how it just, it wasn't worth tarnishing his reputation. Yeah. And um, so I think, you know, whether you think that people notice or not um, I just think that when people could sense deception and when that happens it's like your trust can never be regained because you didn't own up to it but if you owned up to a mistake you know then people could still trust you because they know like if you make a mistake you could be real and come out with it I heard on a, I just remember this I heard on a podcast it was uh, from a sermon I forgot who shared it and they got it from someone else but they said they said I tell on myself before the devil does <laughs> Like I tell, I tell all myself of my own mistakes before the devil points them out. I thought that was like so good. So a couple things I want to share. I want to give you something, some application that you can use in your network marketing business. Okay. So just to, again, give a little bit of a foundation, um, uh, the law of solid ground was what that little excerpt talked about. And the law of solid ground states that trust is the foundation of all leadership. We talked about that honesty, number one trait that people admire. Now, John mentioned something. I watched a little clip of him today talk about this, and it says trust is developed by two things. It's not just character, but it's mm -hmm. also competence. You have to be competent. People will trust you if they know you're actually like good at something, that you can walk it out. If you say you do something, you know they want to see you do it. So it, it's, it's competence, but it's also character. It's having the integrity and in doing what you say. So it can't just be competence because people won't follow you just because you're a gifted leader. They have to know that you do the right thing too, mm -hmm. but they're not going to follow you just because you have integrity. You actually have to know what you're doing as well. And I thought that was so good. So trust is developed with competence and character. And I wanted to give you guys something that I thought about how you could even apply this. Cause you may, you may be thinking like, well, I haven't really done anything to like, you know, mess up right. that big. I haven't mm -hmm. cross recruited. I haven't done anything. Think about this. Okay. Especially for you new people. But even if you're not new, this will apply to you. 
when you first got in network marketing, you probably had so much zeal and excitement that you repelled people because of your overwhelming enthusiasm, meaning maybe you were blasting out on your news feeds on Facebook, posting links, asking me how, join me, this and that. People started blocking you. Maybe you made some of the mistakes from our book where you did the, oh, by the way, phone caller where I called, hey, Michelle, how you doing? We talked for 45 Okay, internet's back. Oh, by the way, I want to talk to you about my business. Okay, a lot of us have made some mistakes that you didn't know you were making. Well, how about you do this? You get to call those same people back and you get to apologize. And you get to say, you know what? A month ago, two months ago, six months ago, um, I just want to apologize for how I acted. And they might be going, what are you talking about? Well, if you remember, I was brand new in my business and I just called you and I threw up all over you, you know, telling you every fact, de detail, and pie chart. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't, I feel like I put my business in front of our relationship. And so I'll, I don't know if that affected you, but I just wanted to ask for your forgiveness. Would you apologize? I'm learning and it'll give you an opportunity also to just tell them, um, look, I'm still in the game. I realize this may or may not be for you. If you could just cheer me on and encourage me, I'd really appreciate it. But my main reason for calling was not to try to talk to you about my business. It was to apologize for how I was acting. And that can keep the door open, right? Because yeah. you don't want to burn the bridge. Yeah. You always want to have the ability to go back to them. And these are genuine apologies because some of you guys really did beat up some eardrums. We did. Yeah, <laughs> you beat up eardrums or you posted commercials. And so I thought that would be something that's good that idea. they could apply. Do you have any thoughts? No, that's good. Yeah. So, so. do you have anything you want to fess up to? <laughs> uh, putting me on the spot. I think you have a good story. I do. And Let's I've hear, never told this to anybody are ever. Are you guys ready to hear yeah. some of uh, one of the skeletons in Michelle's co Skeleton closet? Skeleton in my closet. Nobody knows this ever. I, you know, the, actually, this is the very first time I'm confessing this. But I was inspired. So anyway, when I was a freshman in high school, we were at cheer camp. And me and my roomie. At, I remember cheer at, camp. <laughs> cheer camp, we are like at the dorms at in UC Davis. You stay at the dorms for the week. And anyway, like I was really good at cheerleading and I actually was the youngest person on the squad on varsity and I um, wanted to be head cheerleader and all of that. So anyway, uh, freshman year cheer camp the summer before um, it all began, the freshman year began, we thought it would be funny to moon people out of our went door <gasps> window. Like no. we, you know what mooning is, Michelle right? Carey. You pull down your pants and you show your butt. I just heard this story today. Yeah. And so, like, I thought it, I was so cool because I was being rebellious. And so I get up on the <laughs> window, I pull my pants down, and I'm totally mooning this group of people. It ends up being the instructors of the cheer camp. And so, anyway, they knew what window it was. They came to our room. It was a big deal, and I never fessed up to it. I, like, pointed the finger. I told a lie that um, we left our door open. We are in another hall with some other friends and um and it, someone else must have come in and mm. wound people and so I think that affected one it affected my self-esteem because I felt like crap you know you never feel good when you're lying and two I think that probably affected my chances of getting voted on as head cheerleader so mm -hmm. yeah so wow. skeleton out of my good? closet doesn't that feel okay. good to let that out yeah Maybe so some of my friends that were there because i'm facebook friends with a lot of people still if you're listening to this i'm sorry yeah i have a confession to you make. do good do it oh. <laughs> he's not as perfect remember <laughs> remember i told you i had one cupcake Oh, come on. I had to. Come on. I show had to. You've got to have some skeletons in your closet. Seriously. Um, You've got to. Oh. Are, are you just like little angel? <laughs> like the halo? No, no. No, no. we're so black. Like, we're so like opposite when we're growing up. He was like so good, such a good child. And I was like the rebellious, gave my parents heart attack but all I do, the time. I think I do a pretty good job of owning up when I make a, when I... When I, yeah. When I uh, mess up, right? Sure. No? Okay. When not, if you ever. So mess great up. leaders always fess up. They always yeah. ad admit their mistakes. They always learn from it. They don't point the finger. They don't play the blame game. 
kind of a tough topic to talk about, but hopefully yeah. you guys can apply that in your business. And um, I, I really liked these three topics we talked about this week. Great leaders ask questions, great leaders are decisive, and great leaders take responsibility. Yep. So hopefully you guys will apply that and we can um, kind of move use that to, to move into our new series that we're going to talk about. So we're going to keep this one short, brief, and to the point. And uh, if you guys have any um, other comments or questions, we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we got a webinar I, to prepare for. I think for. we should challenge Adam to think of a time okay. that he messed up. That I messed up. And he needs to post it on Facebook. We'll, we'll end with that. Oh, I got one. What? Um, I was driving my mom, my mom, my parents' car to school. And uh, I was like messing with the radio and I rear ended a guy. This oh, is good, okay, okay, right? Okay. And I rear ended a guy in their Lexus because uh -huh. uh, I was like messing with the radio and he was pulling into um, McDonald's. And so I hit him and I cracked the, the light, the, yeah, the, the, the headlight. headlight. Yeah, I cracked the headlight. And, um, I don't think I, I think I was like, Hey, I parked the car and something oh. happened. Cause the guy, the guy had like an old farm truck. He's like, yeah, don't Someone worry about knows. it. And Cheryl Spencer tag her. We have a <laughs> confession over here. I'm pretty sure I told her, but maybe I didn't cause maybe I was so scared that I wasn't going to get privileges to drive the car again. So broke the light, never fessed up to it. And, uh, man, I, I think I got to make a phone call just to make sure that I, that was smoothed over. So Yeah, let's call your mom right now. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. She loves us. rubbing me in the mud. <laughs> we, we look forward to seeing you on our very first Facebook Live interview via our computer. So hopefully all of that works. Yeah. And, so um, just as a reminder, if you go to our website, if you don't yet have the book, you can go on Amazon and order it or get the Kindle. Uh, if you order it off our website, we will personally sign it to you, send it to you. Uh, some teams are doing group orders because you get discounts if you do 10 or more. It goes down to from 15 to $12 a book. If you do 25 or more, it goes down to $8 a book. She's having so much fun with because me. Because you're sweating. Huh? You're it's, sweating. It's hot. Your confession made you sweat. No, because <laughs> it's hot and the air conditioning's off right now. All right. All right. We're guys. done with this. God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.